Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Maracaibo. You always have the option to play this game with an ongoing story or just play the regular basic game without a story. I'll be explaining it for how the basic game goes. Once you know that you're always free to add the story to it. So let's get started. You are going to play four rounds and then the game is over. Whoever has the most points wins the game. You get some points during your turn, there is a scoring at the end of each round, and there's one final bonus scoring when the game is over. But after four rounds the game ends, if you have the most points you are the winner. First, what is a round? Every player has their own little boat traveling along this route. As soon as one player's boat reaches this space, it's the end of the round. There's a scoring moment, but after that everyone's boat goes back to the start. In round 4, instead of going here, you go here. When one player's boat reaches this space, the round is over. You do that scoring thing again, and after that the bonus scoring because the game has ended. I'll explain those scoring moments later, but a round is playing until someone reaches this space on the board. And in the last round you go for this space. Until that happens, you just keep going around the table taking turns one by one. Next, how do you play the game? What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you do three steps. Step 1 move your boat forward. Step 2. Do actions. Step 3. Refill your hand back up to the maximum. So move your boat, do actions and refill your hand with new cards. Let's go through that again in a bit more detail. Step 1. Start each turn by moving your boat forward. You can't leave it where it is, it has to go toward the end of the path. It's up to you how many spaces you want to move. You can move up to 7 spaces, but you have to move at least one. You're allowed to be on the same space as another player's boat. So again, move up to 7 spaces forward with your own little boat on this route. Only when you reach a space that shows a red hand, then you must stop. Those are here at the end of the path. Step 2. When you've moved your boat, it's time to do something. You're always allowed to pass. If you don't want to do an action, just pass. But if you do want to do something, then you do the action that is connected to the space where you ended your own little boat. Each space is next to a village or a city. Wherever you are, there's something you can do there. So that's your main action, and you can only do one. I'll explain the actions in a moment, but you always have the option to do one main action. You also have a few free actions that you can do. You can do them as much as you want, and you can do them whenever you want. Before the main action or after it, that's up to you. So, step 2 is either pass, or do one main action, and or unlimited free actions. You finish your turn with step 3, which is quite simple. At the start of the game you can have a maximum of 4 cards in your hand. If you're holding fewer than 4 cards, you can take new ones. You can take them for free from the deck, or you can choose from the four cards that are always open on display, but those cost one money per card. Soon as you've taken one, refill the empty spot with a new face-up card. That's it. This is how you play Maracaibo. When it's your turn, you move your boat, then do actions, then refill your hand back up to four cards. If at any point someone's boat reaches this space, or this space in round 4, you stop and do a little scoring before going back to start. And when the game is over, there's a last bonus scoring for some extra points. Now, 
What are all the actions you can choose from when it's your turn? Like I said, that depends on where you end your move with your own boat. You can see most spaces are next to these small villages. If you end your move there, you can do a village action. Your information sheet shows you what that is. A village action is choosing between three options. If you want, you can take one money from the bank or discard all of the cards that you have in your hand to get two money. You need to hold at least one card to be allowed to do this action. Or you can play one card. That means paying the price and then placing it open next to your own player board to get whatever the card gives you. The price for each card is written at the top left corner. Often it's only money, but sometimes you have to meet a certain condition to play the card. Just look at whatever it says on the card. You can play one card from your hand, or you can play one of the cards that you have put above your own player board. Those were reserved, so you could buy them later. Or you can buy a card from here, up at the top of the board. In that case, you leave it there, but you place one of your available workers on it to indicate you've claimed it. If you're the first, that'll give you a reward. Just look at what the card says. I'll explain later what cards can do for you, but that's the action you can do when you've placed your boat next to a village. The village action. Either take one money from the bank, or discard all your cards to get two money, or play one single card. Pay the price and get the reward. There is one nice extra thing about the village action. If you came to the village by moving your boat at least four spaces, then you can do the village action twice. You can do the same action twice or two different things, that's up to you. And if you reached this village by moving your boat all seven spaces, then you can do the village action three times. For example, you could do the take one money action twice, and then as your third action you can play a card. Only the village action does this for you to be allowed to do it more than once if you've traveled many steps to get here. If you ended moving your boat on a space where there is one of your own workers, then you can do the assistant action. Well, that's one thing that playing a card can do for you. Some cards say that when you buy them, you can place one of your workers on a particular space on the game board. The card will tell you which one. You always take a worker from your own supply near your own player board. And whenever your boat reaches that space, you can do whatever it says on the card that you bought earlier. When your boat gets there, you get the reward for this card. The cards will speak for themselves, and you can always look up the icons in the rulebook. If your boat happens to end on one of these square tiles, the quest tiles, then you can do the quest. If you have what the tile is asking for, pay it, and then get whatever the tile gives you. After that, you can place it face down at the bottom on your own player board. You have room for five tiles. Usually, you pay by discarding cards from your hand that show these icons on them. You can also see these rectangular tiles. Those are cities, and there you can do the city action. First, if you want, you can place one of the discs from your own player board on this space on the game board. You can only do that if the space is empty. If it is, then you look at what the space is asking for. This one, for example, wants corn. If I want to do but place a disc here, I have to discard one of the cards from my hand that shows corn on it. Here's one. This one goes on the discard pile, and now I can choose a disc from my player board to put here. I'll do this one. Here it goes. And now this space on my own player board has no more discs on it, which means 
I now have this special ability for the rest of the game. This one says, from now on, my hand limit is six. I can have six cards in my hand. Anyway, that's the first thing you can do in a city action. After that, or if you didn't place a disc, you can do whatever it says on the tile. Just look at what the tile says. This one, for example, says take two money and then do one village action. So, that's already a few actions that you can run into during your turn. You can pass, you can do a village action when your boat is next to a village. You can do an assistant action if your boat is next to one of your own workers. Then just do whatever it says on the card that made you place this worker here in the first place. If you land on a square quest tile, you can do a quest action to pay what this tile is asking for and then get the reward. Or you can do a city action when you reach one of these bigger tiles on the board. First, maybe drop a disc here if that's possible and you want to. And after that, do whatever it says on the tile as an action. If you ever reach a space that shows this globe and a worker, that means you can move your own little worker forward on this track here. The action will tell you how many spaces you can move forward. You don't have to move that many steps, but no more than what it says. And then you get the reward of whatever space you end on. On this track, you can't be together in the same space as another worker. Here, you jump over another worker and pretend that space doesn't exist. And the last main action you can run into is the combat action. That isn't as aggressive as you might think, but it is an elaborate action. Whenever you reach this space that shows these flags, you can choose to do a combat action. The first thing you do is take the top tile of one of these two stacks that also show the same flags. Flip over the tile and look at it. It shows three flags. France is blue, Spain is red, and England is white. Choose one of those three. If it shows a reward next to that flag, you immediately get that. If it shows you have to pay something, you must first pay it. But after that, you look at the swords and the number next to it. The number means you have that many points to spend to do a combat action. You can do two things in a combat action. You can even do both of them if you have enough combat points to spend, but you can only do each thing once. The first thing you can do in a combat action is either spend two combat points to move your own marker forward one space on the track of the same color as the flag that you chose. So for example, I chose Spain, then I move my marker up one space on the red track. Or you can spend five combat points to move your marker up two spaces on that track. The other thing you can do during a combat action is spend combat points to place a cube from here onto the game board. If the space on the game board is empty, then this costs you four combat points. If the space already has a cube on it, then it costs you six combat points. And that cube that was already there is removed from the game. You have to pick a cube that is the same color as the country that you chose for combat. I chose Spain, so I remove the leftmost red cube from here. I'll choose to place this cube here on this empty space. And then I get the reward of whatever it says on this red flag here. And I get to move up one space on the red track for simply doing this action. So, that's the combat action. You can spend combat points to go up on these tracks and or spend points to place a cube from here on spaces with a flag on the game board to go up one space on the track and get the reward of whatever it says on the flag. But, what happens if a combat tile gives me three combat points but I really want to do the combat action for which I need 
four combat points. Then I have two options. I can move my own little cube down by one space, here on this track on my own player board, or I can spend one of my available workers. That's it. You can go up in combat points by moving your cube down on this track, or by paying a worker. Also, sometimes it's possible a combat tile shows something at the top. That means you have to deal with that before doing the combat action. For this, look in the rulebook. Then I can wrap this up. Uh, when you're done with the combat action, place the tile on your own player board here. These were all the main actions that you can run into. Passing, the village action, the assistant action, the quest action, the city action, the explore action, where you get to move your own worker on this track, or the combat action. You might remember that I said that during your turn you do one main action, but you also have an unlimited number of free actions that you can do at any point during your turn. Luckily, there are only two free actions, so that's not too much to explain. The first free action you can do, if you want, is put a card from your hand in these spaces above your own player board. There is room for three cards. The cards that are here don't count as your hand limit. You can't use them when you have to discard a card, but you can buy them later. So this is like a reserve area for cards you intend to pay for at some point. And the other free action is fulfill one of the goals that are written on the card that you have near you, the career card. If you have what a card is asking for, you can deal with that now during your turn. Each goal has an easy option that gives you a small reward, or a harder option that gives you a bigger reward. Either way, when you've fulfilled the goal, you can take the worker that was standing next to it. When you've fulfilled all three goals, you can take an extra reward and then flip the card over and keep it here to look cool. Those are the two free actions you can do during your turn. Quickly about the cards, as I've said, you can buy them during the village action. The cards up here are for points at the end of the game, but you can also buy cards from your hand and the reserve. They also have bonus points on them at the end of the game. Some give you an instant reward, like moving up on these tracks to get more money later in the game, or points. Or they let you place a worker on the game board so you can do an assistant action. Or they give you permanent abilities. It's good to have played cards. Now we can move on to the scoring moments, the ones that you do at the end of all four rounds, and the bonus scoring when the game is over. As I've said, as soon as your boat reaches a space with a red hand, you have to stop there. These other spaces also have their own action. You can see it on the board, or look it up in the rulebook. For round one, two, three, you go this way. In the last round, you go that way. When you've reached this final space here, you finish your turn, and then the game stops for a moment. The interim scoring. Follow these instructions. First, you can either buy a card and refill your hand, or you can take two points. After that, Get as much money as where your own marker is on this money track. And get as many points as where your marker is on this other track here. After that, the player to your left does the same. Either buy a card and refill the hand, or get two points. And then get income and maybe points. Keep going around the table until every player has done this. And this next part is resetting everything for the next round. Remove all the little brown discs from the game board. 
discard the four cards in the open display and lay out four new cards. Flip over the next face down card up here. Now you have another one you can claim if you want. And this also keeps track of which round you're in. And finally everyone's boat goes back to the start. And now it's the next player's turn. The one who's to the left of the player who ended the round. The last thing is the bonus scoring at the end. Again, these last few spaces on the track all have a red hand on them. You have to stop here and they all have their own instruction. And when you get to this last space, the game ends and there is a final bonus scoring. First, you can do the same scoring, either buy a card or take two points. And then every other player also gets to do that. After that, everyone scores points for these tracks. You don't get any money, only points. Look at where your marker is here. And if you've reached any spaces on this top track that show points. Next, get all the points for your cards. The cards that you have bought during the game might have points on them. Go through all of them. And if you've claimed any of these cards at the top, they also give you points at the end of the game. And the last thing you get points for is this, the area with blue, red and white. First, whoever is the furthest ahead on each track gets three points. Then, things might get a little complicated. Try to follow me. Go one by one. First blue, then red, then white. Look at which color has the most cubes present on the game board? That color gets two points. Then look at which color has the second most cubes present on the board. That color gets one bonus point. Then you look at how many points are visible on the left side. For example, blue shows three points. Blue was also the most present on the game board down here, so that's an extra two points. So far, five points for blue in total. Then I look at where my own marker is on this blue track. It's here, past this banner that says three. That means I get three times five points for blue. I get 15 bonus points for blue. And then you do this for every player and every track. Count up how many points each color is worth and then multiply those by where your own marker is on the track of the same color. Done. That is the final scoring. Now you can see who won the game. But regardless of that, I hope everyone had fun playing it. That's it. This is how you play Maracaibo. It's a lot to take in, but the board and your information sheet offer a lot of help before you have to look things up in the rulebook. And you get used to it quite quickly. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.